Hello everyone, welcome back. This is engineer Hussein Mosapi, and in this video we'll be looking at what are known as higher order derivatives. Alright, so before we begin, do not forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell icon. So let's get to it. Now, higher order derivatives in simplicity are just what can I say? Let me make it simple. Say you have a random function. Let's call this function uh, f of x. So let's say f of x is equal to 4x to the fifth power. And I said find the first derivative. The first derivative is our dy of our term, dx. So to find our first derivative, we know having this type of function, we're just going to apply the basic power rule. Therefore, we'll say dy over dx is equal to applying the power rule, the 5 multiplies the 4. So we'll get our 20x to the fourth because I have to subtract the power by 1. So this is our first derivative. Now, in a case where we were asked to find the second derivative, which is d squared y over dx squared, it's always a shift in a notation where you have d to the n, then y over d, x to the n, in the case where n represents the number of derivatives. So if you're finding the first derivative, then n will be one. If you're finding the second derivative, then n will be two. Third derivative, just like that. And fourth, five, keeps on going. Depends with the one who's preparing the question to you. They might give you the fifth, ask you to find the fifth derivative or the seventh. Regardless, just remember the notation will always be in such a manner where n represents the number of the derivative you're looking for. All right, so we need to find the second derivative. Now, I can't find this second derivative directly. Rather, I have to find the first derivative, which I have found. And if I didn't find it, it means I have to find it in order for me to find the second derivative. So to find the second derivative in question, it implies that all I have to do is to say d squared y over dx squared. And looking at the first derivative, which would be my uh, odd function in this case. So for me to find this new function, which is the second derivative, all I have to do is to apply the power in the first derivative, of which I will have, say, 4 times 20, and I'll get 80x to the third power. It keeps on going just like that. So if I wanted to find the third derivative, which is d cubed y over dx cubed, I basically just have to apply my basic power as well, because all I have to do is simply just to say uh, 80 times 3, which will give me 240, and you just a power by what? 1 to get a power of 2. So that's literally the concept behind higher order derivatives. It says you will find in the first derivative or the second derivative or the third derivative, it keeps on going just like that. All right, so I hope that's clear. All right, so what I want us to do is basically to just jump uh, to an example or examples rather. Say we've been given, or let's just say the question says, given that y is equal to 2x to the fourth power. And say we've been asked to find, take for instance, we have been asked to find dy over dx. So we literally have to find the first derivative. So to find the first derivative, all we have to do is to say dy over dx is equal to, if you apply the power rule, since our function can be uh, evaluated with the power rule, this would give us 8x cubed. Then say, maybe we've been also asked to find uh, d squared y over dx squared, which is the second derivative. So to find the second derivative, all we have to do is to differentiate the first derivative that we found. So if we differentiate the first derivative with the power rule, we're going to get 24. 24x reduce the power by 1, you get uh, 2. Then let's take, let's take for instance, we were asked to find a third derivative, which is d cubed y over dx cubed. 
So d cubed y over d x cubed is equal to, that means we have to differentiate the second derivative and we'll get 48x. If we reduce the power by one, we literally get a power of one because we don't really write the one. Then to find, uh, let's say we're also being asked to find the fourth derivative, d fourth y over d x to the fourth. So d fourth y over d x to the fourth will simply just be differentiating the third derivative. We'll get 48 as our final answer. So basically that's how you go about doing this. At times, the functions will be a bit complex than this. It's not always that you get a simple function like this. It's just that I just want you to get the concept behind that or the derivatives. You just differentiating over and over and over again until you meet the required derivative could be the fifth derivative so take for instance you are asked to find let's say uh, find uh, the fifth derivative so all you have to do is to differentiate like five times the same function you are given initially so if it was this you differentiate like five times to get the fifth derivative you should be having a five there so that's literally the concept behind that. I hope it's clear. I hope it's very clear. Let's just look at maybe one last example so that uh, we get to understand the cement piece. Okay, so um, given that, given that f of x is equal to 2x to the fifth power minus 4x cubed plus 3x minus 5. And say we need to find um let's say a says find f prime prime of x it simply just means that we need to find the second derivative so to find the second derivative initially we need to use the first original function that we have which is said to be the odd function and create a new function which would be of the order of two which is the second order that we have been asked to find in this question so to find the second derivative all we're supposed to do is first find the first derivative which would be uh f prime of x so f prime of x we differentiate what we have we literally have 5 multiplying 2 that would be 10x to the fourth then 3 multiply minus 4 that will give you minus 12x to the power of 2 plus what 3 because the derivative of literally 3x is 3 and the derivative of minus 5 will basically be a zero and this will in turn be your first derivative now you need to find f prime prime so therefore f prime prime is going to be as a result of differentiating the first derivative that we have here in order to get the second derivative so this would be 40x to the power 3 minus 24x. You know the derivative of a constant is basically 0. So this is what we're going to end up having as our final answer. I hope it's clear. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you have any queries, you can reach me out on WhatsApp on the number 077-149-5252. Remember, slow progress is better than no progress. And remember to strategize before becoming a statistic. And let's try to push for that one. A plus.